Yes, it's finally time to do bullet penetration. Having a bullet that can shoot through a wall, regardless of you using raycast or rigid body physics, is a really cool thing to add into your game. Now, as always, there's a bunch of different ways that we could approach this problem. So what we're looking at today is one way that I found to work pretty well. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you penetrate walls with your bullets. And I'm gonna make it through this entire video without making a single crude joke. Because this is part 13 of the gun series, we're gonna do a little bit of review of what we've done so far as we go through this, because I know not everybody who lands here is going to be wanting to watch the other 12 videos. But if you do wanna see the full system end to end implemented, we have the whole playlist available on YouTube. I've got the link in the description. The way we're gonna approach this is probably relatively unsurprising if you watch those other ones. We're gonna make a new bullet penetration config scriptable object, which is a really long name. In there, we're gonna configure things like how many objects can we penetrate? How thick of objects can we penetrate? How much accuracy do we lose if we've penetrated an object? And of course, how much damage do we lose after that penetration has occurred? One thing we won't be doing in this video is really complex per material based bullet penetration configurations. It's gonna be one configuration per gun. We could integrate that into the impact management system and maybe I'll do that in a future video. If that's something you're interested, leave a comment and maybe I can take a look at that. Once we have this configuration, which could be configured per gun or we can reuse them across guns, we need to set up per, if we're gonna raycast from the camera, if we're gonna shoot a projectile, regardless, whenever that bullet makes impact with whatever object it hit, what we're gonna do is go in the current bullet direction, raycast back towards the bullet and see if we hit something. If we've hit something, that means we made it all the way through a collider to the other side and we can start trying to penetrate forward from there. If we have simple colliders like spheres or boxes, capsules, we could use math to figure out where the exit point's gonna be, but whenever we have mesh colliders, that becomes much more math intensive to try to figure out. So I think the raycast is the most flexible way for us to make sure that we made it to the other side of the wall and then we can continue on with whatever we were doing before. That's the core concept. Don't forget that the full project is available on GitHub for free for you, regardless if you're a Patreon supporter or not. If I have more than 13 videos in the gun series, by the time you're watching this, you can check out branch part 13 and you'll see exactly what we did in this video. Let's hop in to the implementation. For bullet penetration, we're gonna start with a bullet penetration config scriptable object. That means this class should extend the scriptable object and implement the system iClonable interface. We'll add the create asset menu to make it show up in our create asset menu. Give it a default file name of bullet penetration config, a menu underneath the gun slash bullet penetration config where all our other configs are and give it order. I think six is the right one for this for it to be on the bottom. If we think about bullet penetration, there's a few ways we can do it. I'm going to do it where we can penetrate a certain number of objects as long as they are less than some configurable amount thick. Whenever we penetrate through an object, we're going to lose our accuracy by some configurable amount and we'll also deal less damage per object that we go through. In our clone, as usual, we're going to define a new bullet penetration config scriptable object, copy the values from this one to that one, and then return that copy. That's all we need to do here. Normally we put logic in these scriptable objects where they control, like the damage controls how damage is applied. But since the gun is the one handling the shooting and all of that stuff, it's really gonna just use the values we have configured here. We'd have to pass a lot of values back and forth to encapsulate all the logic here. So I'm gonna implement all that in the gun scriptable object instead. As usual, we'll start off by adding a new config scriptable object. We'll kind of shorten that name since it's already super long. On clone at the very bottom, we'll need to make sure that we clone that one. And let's start with the hit scan one. That's kind of the easier one to handle. Just to recap real quick, in case you haven't been following all 12 other videos, the scriptable object receives a tick every update or every however frequently you wanna call it. We try to shoot if we are pressing the left mouse button. And here we handle things like how quickly can we shoot based on the shoot config fire rate. We play a sound and we play a particle system. We figure out the spread. And the important part is based on if we are hit scanning or not, we'll do two different types of shooting, either hit scan or projectiles. And do hit scan shoot. So far, we just take a direction, we do a raycast, we play a bullet trail, and eventually we'll play impact particle systems whenever that actually makes it to the impact point. Do projectile shoot does similar stuff. We get a bullet that we send off in the direction of the gun. We spawn it and it has a rigid body and just goes flies off and we handle whenever it makes collision to play stuff with this event that gets raised on collision. Cool. Let's take a look at 
do hit scan shoot. I think so far this looks fine. It's really in play trail where I think bulk of the changes are going to happen because here's where we release the trail and all that kind of stuff. So with bullet penetration, we want to do all of this already. And then really we want to restart the process on the other side of the wall if it's thin enough for us to penetrate, right? So this seems like a good place for us to start. So if we have our bullet pen config and we need to penetrate some objects, we'll do something. But how do we know how many objects we've already penetrated? What I'm going to do is recursively call play trail depending on some condition. So let's just say that we're going to do that. So we'll need a new parameter. Maybe we'll call it iteration. And so we don't break everything. We'll give it a default value. We'll come back later and update the documentation. So we can come here, check if we should penetrate more objects than we've iterated over already. So by default, it's going to be zero. So if we have at least one object to penetrate, we're going to do this stuff. Maybe we'll wait one extra frame to give it time to penetrate through. From here, the way I'm going to do it, because we don't know what type of collider we hit. If it's a simple sphere or box collider, we could figure it out with math. But with mesh colliders, it gets a little bit more messy. So I think the simplest way to do this is to raycast back from the opposite side of the collider based on our max penetration depth. If that hits something, because we know nothing is coming from the other direction, we know that's where the other side of the wall is and we can spawn there. So we'll get the direction that we were previously traveling on with endpoint minus start point dot normalized. Then I'm going to find something we're going to call back cast origin. This whole process of raycasting backwards, I'm going to call back casting. So the back cast origin is going to be at the hit point, but projected forward in the direction we were just traveling and then by however much our max penetration depth is. So we're going to start from that point and go backwards. So we'll raycast from the back cast origin in the negative direction, pass out a raycast hit, going only the distance of our max penetration depth using the existing shoot config hit mask. If that hits something, we can get that hit point. We can use that as the penetration origin. So the next time that we try to shoot or project again in our raycast, we'll use this as the starting point. What we can do then is after we've calculated a random range between our min and max accuracy loss, similar to what we do with the bullet spread, we want to kick off basically the exact same process we did whenever we did hit scan shoot. So instead of copy pasting a whole bunch of code, what might be useful to do is call do hit scan shoot again, telling it we want to go in this direction, but we need to tell it we want to start instead from the penetration origin and probably we need to also tell it which iteration we're on. Let's go back there. Let's go ahead and update the method signature by adding a vector three origin and the trail is probably going to want to start from a different location. So why don't we go ahead and add a new vector three input We can call that trail origin. And of course, the int iteration that will provide a default value of zero. We'll update our physics raycast to use the origin that we received instead of the get raycast origin. Whenever we're going to play a trail, instead of using the shoot system transform position, we'll use that trail origin that we receive now. Make sure to provide the iteration to the play trail as the last argument as well. Now we probably have some errors up here at where we first called do hit scan shoot on our tick or try to shoot. We need to tell it we want to shoot from raycast origin. The trail origin should come from the shooting particle system, tip of the gun, and we can use the default zero trail iteration. Cool. All the way back down, we need to provide the trail origin. That's going to be the same place, the penetration origin. To make our damage bull take damage that considers how many objects we've penetrated, on handle bullet impact, we're going to need to know the number of objects we've penetrated. So let's add that to the method signature with an int objects penetrated. In this if hit collider try get component out i damageable, we'll define a float max percent damage to be one. Then if we have our bullet pen config that's not null and we've penetrated more than one object, we'll iterate from zero to the number of objects we've penetrated, multiply equaling max percent damage by the bullet pen config damage retention percentage. That way, if we've impacted, let's say, three objects and we have 0.9 as our damage retention percentage, it's going to go down by 10% each time. So the first time it'll go down to 90%, the second time maybe 81%, and the third time maybe something like 73%. Then we can provide to the damage config, get damage, just the max percent damage that we just calculated. Then in our damage config, get damage, we need to make it accept also a damage multiplier. So we'll just multiply by that damage multiplier after we evaluated the damage curve. Simple enough. Should be all. Back over in the Unity editor. First things first, we need to set up our property drawer in the UI toolkit, which is really just duplicating our property field and binding it to bullet pen config. I did implement the property drawer for this scriptable object. I just didn't think it was super important for this particular tutorial about doing bullet pen config. And if you watched all the other videos, you already know how to do this. 
And if any of this, you skipped over the video, I'm gonna have links and there's a whole playlist with every one of these videos that it goes in depth about every single thing that's been done so far, including the editor tooling, everything. This part's not super important for your bullet pen config, it's more for our scriptural optic system. Since we have the M4 selected by default, let's create a new, just simple bullet pen config. We'll say we'll penetrate one object, all the defaults here are fine, maybe the percentage 0.9 or something. We'll click play. We can see this editor tool is going to tell us approximately where our bullet can possibly go if we make it through this thing. And if for some reason it can't go through, you won't see that projection. So let's see what happens if we shoot. Cool. Obviously, if I hold down mouse one, it's not going to be perfectly aligned anymore because we're not shooting at that exact center anymore. But we can see the bullets are going off to the side. As they go through, they're losing some of the accuracy, still flying through and we're hitting the wall behind us. So far, it looks like it's working great for our ray casting. Let's take a look at how we can make it work with rigid body bullets as well. Over in our bullet, there's a couple of things I think we're going to need to do. First is to track how many objects we've penetrated. The second is I think we're going to need to manipulate the rigid body a little bit. So I'm going to have a public git and a private set on that. This may not be the best approach. We'll see. Our collision event will accept how many objects we've penetrated. And whenever we're spawning, we'll reset that. We'll provide the current objects penetrated on collision enter and then we'll increment it. And notice just now I misspelled on collision. Can't believe nobody told me. Okay, that should be all we need to do for bullet. We've updated our signature of collision event and tracked how many objects we have penetrated. Back in the gun scriptable object, we'll see immediately we have an error because handle bullet collision no longer supports that. So we'll add that in, objects penetrated. Now in here, what's going on? We're making a trail render disappear. We probably don't wanna do that if we're still penetrating something. We're immediately setting the game object inactive and releasing it from the bullet pool. We probably don't want to do that either. The stuff at the bottom about the collision, probably we do want to do that. Why don't we start off with, let's check if the collision's not null, if our bullet pen config's not null, and we can still penetrate some object. So remember, this will give us zero the first time that we're going through something. We'll need to figure out the direction to go. And a lot of times you might think you can do like bullet rigid body velocity, but on collision is raised, after the impact's already been made and the velocity has been manipulated by the physics system. So this is no longer reliable velocity. Instead, we can use something called the collision impulse. The impulse tells us basically the inverse of the impact velocity. Maybe in physics, you remember for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's basically the impulse here. So whatever velocity we came in with, it's gonna be negative impulse, but it also has a mass component to it. So we'll get to that in a minute. For our direction, it doesn't matter. So we'll leave just negative collision impulse normalized. Then we're gonna do the same thing we just did for the raycast by getting a back cast origin based on the collision contact point. So we'll do a contact point contact equals collision not get contact zero. Say the back cast origin is equal to the contact point plus the direction because we flipped it. So we wanna go in the same direction that the bullet was going times the bullet pen config dot max penetration depth. Exact same thing we did a second ago. And actually we're gonna do basically the exact same thing we did a second ago. So I'm gonna go copy paste that. This bit's all gonna be the exact same. We're not gonna do, do hit scan shoot though. We're gonna do a little bit different things. We're gonna start with, we're gonna move the bullet to wherever we made contact. So on the opposite side of the wall. But if we put it directly there, it's gonna immediately make contact with the wall and get disabled because it's penetrated too many objects. So we wanna set it off a little bit from this hit point. I'm just gonna do direction times 0.01F, so it's a little bit off. And then we're gonna set the velocity because remember the velocity of the rigid body has been impacted because we made collision already. We'll set the velocity to be the negative collision impulse divided by the bullet rigid body mass. There's some magic physics nonsense about how the impulse relates to the velocity, but the impulse being defined as the mass times the change in velocity, we can tell that depending on our physics properties of the collider's hit, this may not give us the exact original velocity of our rigid body. Also, depending on if we hit an object that was moving and has its own rigid body, we may also get some weird results in those cases. I think for most cases, most of the time, this is gonna give us a good result though. Another potential solution is whenever we spawn in the bullet, you can capture the velocity that the bullet's traveling at and then just refer to that whenever we make impact, okay? If we didn't make impact, we're gonna to wanna to do probably most of this stuff. Let's get the reference of the trail under at the top. And then basically this, 
And also if we're not taking this if, we'd want to do the same thing. So maybe we want to make a function for this so we don't have to do it twice. So let's just make a private void, disable trail and bullet, and just paste in this code about disabling the trail and releasing the bullet. And of course, call this in the else block and if we don't even hit the physics raycast. And we still want to play the impact and do all of that kind of stuff. So I think this is good. One really important thing for our damage to work is whenever we're going to call handle bullet impact, we need to provide that number of objects penetrated. The same goes for handle bullet impact on our raycast one that we didn't do earlier in play trail. Without that, it's always going to do full damage even if it penetrates an object. Let's give that a shot as well. We will change our M4 to no longer use hit scan. It's going to use the actual shooting. Let's give it a shot. Ha, give it a shot doing guns. Check that out. Still doing the thing. Pretty cool. It's not moving sideways very much because the accuracy loss is very small compared to the velocity. Maybe if we do, there we go. With higher values, we can see it starts going all over the place. 15 is probably too high, but I think you get the idea. Bullet penetration is a great way to add more depth into the gameplay of your game. It allows you to add new interesting ways to attack enemies or other players if you have a multiplayer game. What we've implemented so far is a good starting point for whatever type of bullet penetration you want to use. And like I said in the introduction, if you're interested in a more complex system that considers the material properties that we want to go through, let me know in the comments if there's enough interest, I can take a look at making that video. My thought is this can be relatively easily integrated into the impact system that we've already done and is integrated into this gun system as well. And to test your understanding, what I would do is challenge you to implement a bullet penetration modifier that would enable the ability for a gun to start shooting through walls. So maybe you have penetrating rounds or something like that that would turn on the bullet pen config by allowing it to go through some objects. Based on part, I think it was 10 and 11, maybe nine and 10, something like that. I think you should be able to do that. And if you've been getting value out of this video or the series, what I'd really appreciate it is if you went into the description and used the asset store and humble bundle affiliate links to do your shopping there. It doesn't cost you anything at all and it really helps me out a lot. It'd also be really awesome if you liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And if you wanted to show your support directly, you could go to patreon.com slash academy or just click join right here on YouTube, or super thanks even. You can get your name up here on the screen, like Andrew Bowen at the Phenomenal tier, Bruno Bozic at the Tremendous tier, Autumn K, Ivan, Rulin, Ifiopolis, Solarint, and Perry at the Awesome tier, and all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.